In the realm of classic cinema, the 1941 film High Sierra Stands is a timeless emblem of the industry's prowess. But beyond its surface, one might wonder, are there lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? What enduring qualities render High Sierra an everlasting symbol of cinematic excellence? Let's delve into some random facts about this iconic production. Released during a pivotal period in Hollywood's history, High Sierra not only showcased the brilliant direction of Raoul Walsh, but also marked a turning point in Humphrey Bogart's career, propelling him into the realm of leading roles. The film's gritty narrative, a departure from conventional crime dramas of its time, resonates with audiences even today, underscoring its narrative innovation. Now, consider this. What is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to High Sierra? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Crafted with intrigue and suspense, High Sierra remains an indelible mark on the cinematic landscape, an enduring testament to the industry's ability to captivate and endure. Share your thoughts and memories with us. High Sierra, released in 1941, holds a notable place in cinematic history for several reasons. One key aspect is that it marked the first on-screen billing for Cornel Wilder. This milestone in Wilder's career is a testament to the film's significance as it introduced a talent who would go on to make significant contributions to the film industry. Moreover, High Sierra has earned a place among the 1001 movies you must see before you die, as recognized by Steven Schneider. This acknowledgement underscores the enduring impact and quality of the film, solidifying its status as a must-watch classic. Schneider's compilation serves as a guide for cinephiles, highlighting movies that have left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Another interesting facet is the connection between High Sierra and the 1955 film I Died a Thousand Times, starring Jack Palance and Shelley Winters. The latter is a noteworthy remake of High Sierra, with a script closely mirroring the original. This remake serves as a testament to the enduring appeal of the 1941 film, inspiring later generations of filmmakers to revisit and reinterpret its narrative. In summary, High Sierra from 1941 is not merely a film of its time but a cinematic gem that introduced Cornel Wilde, secured a spot in the cinematic canon, and inspired a later remake. Its enduring legacy is a testament to its quality and cultural impact, making it a significant piece of cinematic history. The 1941 movie High Sierra boasted an impressive cast, featuring not only the iconic Humphrey Bogart, but also three Oscar-nominated actors, Arthur Kennedy, Henry Travers, and Cornel Wilde. Bogart's co-star, Ida Lupino, faced a unique challenge during the final scene as she struggled to evoke tears. Bogart, known for his straightforward approach, coaxed her into the emotional moment with a blunt ultimatum. Lupino, however, did not appreciate his method and refused to work with him again in the film Out of the Fog, leading to John Garfield taking his place. An interesting tidbit for car enthusiasts is that Roy Earl's vehicle in the film is a 1938 Plymouth Coupe. These details offer a glimpse into the dynamics on set and the meticulous choices made in the production of High Sierra, contributing to its lasting impact in cinematic history. The rights to W.R. Burnett's novel were swiftly secured within two weeks of its publication, setting the stage for the creation of the 1941 movie High Sierra. This quick acquisition highlights the immediate recognition of the source material's potential. Under the direction of Raoul Walsh, the film reached a notable climax with a mountain chase sequence, a spectacle noted by Walsh himself as the longest he ever directed. The intensity of this sequence adds a distinctive flavor to the movie, emphasizing its commitment to gripping storytelling. Interestingly, James Cagney's decision to turn down the role of Roy Earl, fearing typecasting, opened the door for a unique portrayal by another actor. In the intricate web of High Sierra's production, each choice, from securing the novel's rights to the directorial decisions, played a crucial role. The film stands as a testament to the rapid recognition of compelling stories, the dedication of its director in crafting intense sequences, and the casting choices that shaped its final form. High Sierra's journey from page to screen is a fascinating exploration of the intricacies behind a cinematic classic. When Pa first meets Roy at the gas station in the 1941 movie High Sierra, he mentions a close call with a jackrabbit, stating, a jackrabbit jumped in front of the car, and I kinda lost my head. 
Interestingly, director Rail Walsh had a similar encounter a dozen years earlier, losing an eye when a jackrabbit crashed through the windshield of his car. This eerie parallel between a scene in the film and Walsh's real-life experience adds a layer of authenticity to High Sierra. It reflects the uncanny ways in which life imitates art and highlights the unexpected connections between the filmmaker's personal history and the narrative choices in the movie. The tension on set was not limited to the mountain chase sequences. According to Walsh's biography, Humphrey Bogart, a central figure in High Sierra, was known to complain about various aspects of the production, from the food provided for lunch to the shooting conditions. This behind-the-scenes insight sheds light on the challenges faced during the making of the film and offers a glimpse into the dynamics between the cast and crew. As the camera rolled on High Sierra, the intersection of real-life incidents and on-screen drama created a unique atmosphere on set. Whether it was the shared experience of a jackrabbit encounter or Bogart's outspoken nature, these anecdotes contribute to the rich tapestry of the movie's production history, showcasing the intricacies that shaped the cinematic classic. In the end, High Sierra's journey from script to screen becomes more than just a retelling of a crime drama. It becomes a narrative woven with the threads of personal experiences, unexpected parallels, and the challenges faced during its production elements that enrich the viewer's understanding of this 1941 film. Body Count 5 High Sierra, a 1941 crime drama, isn't just a tale of heists and escapes. It's marked by the impactful portrayal of Roy Earl, a character inspired by the notorious John Dillinger. Humphrey Bogart's earlier role in The Petrified Forest drew from the same well of inspiration. However, the movie's real-world impact extends beyond its characters. As the plot unfolds, the rugged landscapes play a silent yet significant role. In the thrilling car chase scenes, keen-eyed viewers might spot the initials LP on a mountain. This simple detail holds the key to the movie's outdoor scenes, filmed in Lone Pine, California. The connection to real locations adds an authentic layer to the cinematic experience. Amidst the action and authenticity, one can't ignore the body count a stark reminder of the stakes in this crime narrative. The film doesn't shy away from the consequences of its characters' choices, with a total of five lives lost in the course of events. In delving into High Sierra, it's not just a chronological exploration of scenes, it's an encounter with the echoes of real-life criminals, the carefully chosen locations, and the gravity of the choices made on screen. This 1941 classic isn't just a movie, it's a glimpse into a world where crime has a cost, etched against the backdrop of Lone Pine's mountains. As we bid adieu to the cinematic journey through the rugged terrains of the 1941 classic, High Sierra, let the echoes of Humphrey Bogart's unforgettable portrayal and the breathtaking landscapes linger in your thoughts. Like the timeless peaks in the Sierra Nevada, this film stands tall in the annals of cinema, its narrative carving indelible imprints on the hearts of those who ventured into its compelling tale. Now, as you reflect on the resonance of Roy Earl's character and the intricacies of the human experience woven into the fabric of this masterpiece, consider the threads that bind your own narrative to the tapestry of High Sierra. What resonates with you? The poignant twists of fate, the melancholy beauty of the mountains, or perhaps the nuanced performances that transcend the celluloid realm? In this digital age, let's not merely consume but engage. Share your musings, your favorite scenes, or the moments that struck a chord with your soul. As the pixels on the screen fade, let our collective memories of High Sierra remain vivid and vibrant, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. Your thoughts are the connective tissue, the bridge between past and present. So, whether you pen your reflections or share them across the digital expanse, remember that your narrative enriches the legacy of this cinematic gem. Let the discussions unfold, and let the spirit of High Sierra continue its journey through the corridors of time, touching the hearts of generations. Thank you for immersing yourself in the world of High Sierra. Your time and reflections are treasures that enrich the collective experience. Until our narratives intertwine again, stay captivated by the magic of cinema.